Hi, I'm Mike Flander with Endesys. I'd like to welcome you to our instructional video for the Endesys 2 to 1 heated liner. This liner is based off of the Graco Line Laser 250DC platform. Today we're going to walk you through the controls and how to operate the machine. If you'd like any sales related information or the latest brochure, please visit endesys.com for more information. Here we're going to take a look at our engine and pressure controls. First we have our throttle, lower and higher. We have our choke, off and on. We have our hydrostatic and compressor on off switch, our general ignition switch and our pressure controls. Clockwise increases hydraulic pressure to the pumps, counterclockwise decreases pressure to the pumps. To start the machine typically we have the throttle in a mid position. Choke on, unless the machine has been operating for a while, and... Here's our general overview from the rear of the machine. First we have our heat controls, which is mounted on top of the heater for the low volume or hardener side. Our pressure gauge for the low volume side, pump for the low volume side, and then also our pressure relief uh, valve for the low volume side, which allows us to dump material back to the tanks. Our hydraulic splitter, which controls the volume or the speed of both pumps, is mounted below here. We have our battery, our parking brake, release, active, and then we have our pressure gauge for our high volume side, our pump for our high volume side, heater for our high volume side, and our pressure relief valve for our high volume side. All right, so now we're looking at the left side of the machine as if you were standing on the, on the back of the machine operating it, uh, which is also the high volume or the two-part side uh, to the line laser. And we have an agitator, our recirc uh, line coming back, which is actually where uh, it comes back into the tank from our pressure relief valve here. Our overall air controls for the tank, uh, uh, on-off valve, pressure bleed off, and our regulator to control the amount of air pressure into the tank. We have a fill or sight port, our immersion heater for the glycol on the bottom of the tank, and then inside here we have our thermostat to set the temperature for the glycol. We have a plug right here so that you can quickly drain uh, the tank as needed if you're doing color changes or things like that. On off valve for the fluid coming out of the tank. And then from there we go up into our Y strainer and into the pump. And then from the pump we go to the heater, to our filter and pressure relief valve, and then from there out to the hoses. So here we have an overview of the right side of the machine as if you were standing from the viewpoint of the operator. This is the low volume side of the system, uh, the one and the two to one. The tank controls, including our immersion heater for the glycol, fluid path, uh, and uh, pressure controls are the exact same as the left side. Again, we recommend uh, 30 to 40 PSI of air pressure on the tank, whatever temperature needed for your particular material. And then again, just to verify that uh, whatever air pressure you have on the tank, that you have uh, generally in the same area of fluid pressure coming into the bottom of your pump, which is checked on your, your fluid uh, pressure gauge right there. We also have our hose hanger, which is, uh, we include a 25 foot hose standard with the machine. That is so that you can remove the gun from its holder uh, for hand spraying applications if you're stenciling intersections, things like that. To put the gun back into the holder, we simply go in at a slight angle bend up, making sure that the trigger is above the actual actuator, and then just lock it back down. Uh, all the uh, gun setup is standard for a line laser 250, if you're familiar with Draco's line lasers. Uh, we have controls uh, or locks here to be able to go in or out, and then also independent controls uh, or uh, mounts for each V gun, if you have one or two, uh, and then also gun location forward and backward. To fill your tank, you can either remove your clamp 
and push the tank back backwards or disconnect your airline and pull the top of the tank off. Or you could use your view port or fill port with a funnel to pour your material into the tank. For operation of the tank, we want to make sure first that we have glycol in our reservoir. Generally, we need this level to be uh, a few inches higher than our bleed port on the tanks. Uh, this glycol reservoir works uh, is attached to both our high volume and our low volume tanks. Then we need to set our glycol temperatures. Uh, typically you want to set this for whatever temperature you would like to feed the pump at. There is an individual heater on both tanks that can be controlled independently, so you can have different temperatures on your high volume and your low volume tank. Then we need to turn on our air uh, to our tank and select an air pressure. Generally we recommend between 30 and 40 psi. And once you have air pressure there, you just need to verify that you have fluid pressure on your inlet gauge. That should be roughly or equal to whatever air pressure you have on the tank. Okay, here we're going to cover solvent pump operation. First, we have our tank, which is about two to two and a half gallons. Simply remove the tri clamp and the cover, which is also vented. Uh, and you can either fill or inspect the level of solvent that you have in the tank. We have our air controls here, on off valve to shut the air on and off to the pump, and we have our air regulator. Generally, we recommend about 60 psi air pressure on your solvent pump. We also provide a grounding strap if you would like to ground your solvent containers as you're using. Okay, we're going to talk about our two engines used in operation of the line laser. First is our main Honda engine used to provide hydraulics and air for the machine, for operation of the machine. First thing we want to do is check the fluid levels. Our hydraulic oil uh, uh, fluid check is up here. We've got just a standard dipstick with a minimum and a maximum on there. We just want to make sure the fluid level is in between. And then we also have an oil level uh, dipstick down below here on the engine. Be sure to do this before daily operation of the machine. We have uh, our fuel tank fill right here that includes a fuel filter, a fuel filter which can be replaced as needed. Then we have our fuel on off switch here and then the rest of the controls uh, including the choke are controlled from our engine controls on the back of the machine. We do provide a pull start option if needed although this is an electrically started machine again from uh, the engine controls on the back of the machine. Uh, then we have our uh, Honda generator, which provides the power needed for heat on the system, which is our glycol heat on the bottom of the tanks, our primary heaters, and our hose heat. We just need to make sure that the vent on top is in the on position, uh, that we turn the main engine, engine switch to on, and choke if needed. And just pull and start. While striping, if you do not need the gun in a forward position, such as if you were going up against curbs, things like that, you may want to try taking the mount for the guns, uh, for the spray gun and the bead guns, and putting them in their rear location, which can provide a more stable platform for striping. Here we're going to cover the bead system we use. Uh, we just use the standard Graco pressurized bead system. You can do it in a single or dual drop option. Uh, either option you do, uh, the right bead tank will always have two gauges on it. One of them is going to be for our overall air pressure on the system. This includes the air pressure available for the gun and for uh, our pressure pots and both bead tanks. And then the other gauge is going to be for the bead tank individually. We have a regulator up here which we can control that air pressure for uh, the bead tank. Uh, we have a blow off on here which is uh, rated for 30 psi, so you have a 30 psi max uh, air on the bead tank. And then you will have an independent regulator and gauge for each tank if you're doing dual drop. To fill the tank, we simply uh, release our T nut and pull open the tank and then use the provided bead funnel 
to pour beads into the tank. When you're pouring beads into the tank, we want to make sure that the caps and covers for uh, everything engine related, including the fuel tanks, are closed and or covered so that you do not get beads into the fuel system. Once you have beads in the bead tank and we have provided air pressure to it, we're going to push it out. Uh, that pushes it out from the hose to our bead guns. On our bead gun, we have a shutoff valve so that we can control each individual bead gun by itself. So if I wanted to turn this gun off, I would turn the valve like that. If I wanted to turn it on, I would turn it with. Um, so that even if you have a dual drop tank, you can run just one bead gun at a time. We also have uh, valves here, uh, pinch valves here that we can turn in and out, and that will control uh, the open and shut operation of the bead guns. So for the uh, valve that's going to the bead gun, uh, the more we go in uh, with the adjustment, the slower the valve is going to open. And for the exhaust on the valve, the one that's just out and open, the more we adjust that down, the slower the gun is going to close. And you'll adjust those to get the timing of the bead gun open, opening and shutting to be in line with the speed that you're striping on the road. Um, and then we also have the pneumatic switch to operate the bead guns on an adjustment here with two Phillips head screws. We just want to make sure that when we actuate the gun uh, with the line laser that that button is being fully depressed. It may require periodic uh, adjustment as needed. Power for our heat controls is provided through this plug-in. When running off the generator power, we want it plugged into the generator. You can also unplug it and plug it into an extension cord or local power to run it without the generator. You would typically want to do this if you were trying to condition the temperature of the tanks overnight or for an hour or two before you go on site to strike for the day. The Endesis heat controller automatically distributes power to each of our three different heat zones for each side. On our high volume side, we have our preheater, our hose heat, and our tank heat. And then for our low volume side, we also have our preheater, hose heat, and tank heat. The heat controller will primarily give power to our preheater. So if our preheater wants power, uh, it has first priority in receiving it. If the preheater is not calling for heat, we then uh, let the power transfer over to our hose heat. And if neither our preheater or hose heat it requires power, we then let that power go to our tank heat. We can set the temperatures for both our A and our B side through the controls down here. So F1 would go up for both the A preheat and hose heat. Uh, F2 would go down. Same for our B, F3 would go up and F4 would go down. Notice our preheat and hose heat temperature set points are tied together. Uh, you cannot control them independently, so they both go up and down together. You also notice that our tank heat does not have a temperature preset on it. That's because the actual temperature set point for the tank heat is controlled by the immersion heater on the bottom of the tank. You'll need to adjust that to whatever temperature you would like. We're simply here displaying the temperature of the glycol in the tanks uh, as they are at this moment. All right, so in this mode, we're providing power to all three zones, our preheater, hose heat, and tank heat. When running the machine overnight or uh, when simply trying to warm up the material in the tanks uh, to prepare for spraying, we may not want to run our preheaters in hose heat. So to allow power to go directly to our tanks without anything else, we simply hold down the F4 button, which will take us into tank heat mode. Here, we're now only providing power to the immersion heaters in the tanks and displaying the temperature of the glycol in the tanks, uh, both our A and B tanks separately. To return to normal operation mode, we simply hit uh, the green button on the bottom of the screen which now takes us back to normal operation of the Endesis heat controller.
All right, here we're gonna take you through a startup procedure. We'll take you from a completely shut down condition to ready to strike. Be sure before you do this uh, on a daily basis to check all the fluid levels, including fuel, uh, engine oil, hydraulic oil, and glycol levels in the machine. 